Welcome back just to a brand new video from me and we are going back in time. We are looking at Claudio Ranieri's tactic that he used to win the Premiership. And what we're going to do is we're going to see how that tactic would fare now with the team that Leicester have and how the Premiership has developed so far since they've won. So let's get straight into this video. I'll show you the tactic. I'll show you how we've got on and let's have some fun. So formerly Claudio Ranieri won the Premiership with Leicester. Then the season after that, he had an absolute shocking one on the verge of rally and he then got the sack from Leicester. Leicester not doing that well IRL now, so what we are going to do is we're going to see if implementing Claudio Ranieri's tactic into our game, would that make a difference for how they will play in real life? So, I'm going to show you the tactic that I have built using Claudio Ranieri's wonderful, wonderful low block. Yes, you heard that right, low block, and I'll show you just how we get on. So, we are going with his 4-4 Two. Now, what Claudio Ranieri did was play this low block, and what it means with a low block is, once again, they're not going to push into their area. It's going to be letting them come into our half, and then we push. That's why we have get stuck in and press more. So, even though we're pressing more, it doesn't mean we're going to run up the pitch. We just press where we need to. And that's kind of what Leicester did. As soon as they were in our half into like the 18-yard box, that kind of area, the press was then put onto him to try and close the ball down, get the ball back and get it to Jamie Vardy and get it up there. I think Okazaki was up there as a target forward. I would kind of say a target forward or DLF, but we changed that one change that we made, but we'll get into that in just a sec there. The way that I liked is a... Playing to the fullbacks as well. We counter press and we counter, like I say, gain that ball, getting it up to the fast player straight away to Jamie Vardy. Try and get the ball through and try and break as fast as physically possible with him whilst just absorbing the pressure from the opposition. We also have pass into space because we are looking for them passes to Jamie Vardy. He's going to try and get the ball. We hit the early crosses. That just invites the early ball and getting Jamie Vardy into space. And we just play a bit fairly wider as well. Just open it up and just spread the defense of the other team allowing more space to be ran out and once again allowing the fast players to push through and get in we have got just a standard tempo and a standard passing i could have gone quicker tempo for this one but i thought standard would be just normal as they didn't really hoof it up the field like as as well, i would say as quickly as possible but i feel like on a high tempo some players panic on the ball and we didn't want that happening with this side. So we just kept it on a standard tempo and we allowed the team to run at the defenders as well. So if we've got some very talented dribblers of the ball in there. So we're going to show you just exactly how the 4-4-2 was set up. And he concedes. So in Diddy is going to be the main focus here. He becomes our N'Golo Kante. He is our replacement. So why is he a replacement? Because he has the 17 work rate. He has the 15 teamwork. He has the 16 stamina, stamina, 14 strength. Pace is not the best out there. I understand that. But his natural fitness as well is 15. With his 19 tackling. As a box-to-box -box with a 19 tackling gain up and down the field. It's just perfect to have him. You could really have him as a ball-winning midfielder. You could definitely put that in there as well and then put him on support so he's all up the field. But I just like the box-to-box. -box. It suited him more of that role, but that's just the way I just the way I am. Tillemans then becomes our Danny Drinkwater, which is a large improvement, if you don't mind me saying. And we just put him as a DLP as well, really. He... I could have gone for more of an advanced playmaker as well, but it was just suited how the formation was just to sit back and let them push. And then he becomes a nice distributor of the ball with his 18 passing, 17 technique and 17 vision. He just spreads the ball around absolutely beautifully, Doyle. And he's just a fantastic player. Now, the one change that I did make was that Dakar came in as a advanced forward. Now, Okazaki, I would assume, like I said, plays at a DLF or he played as a potentially target forward so i've kind of gone for two strikers that are really up the field away from everyone doing the pressing here they probably press when the ball's like high up the field as in the halfway line but i didn't want them getting too back and too involved with the the the, the back eight that we've got there because i want them to get forward as quickly as possible and use the pace that they've got so Dakar sitting on 16 acceleration and 17 pace and then jamie vardy who did 
get injured. That's why he's not playing. As you can see, he's coming back from an injury with his 16 and 14. With the off the ball as well from Jamie Vardy, he's going to look to get them passes in. Actually, Jamie Vardy smashed it as well, gained 25 goals this year and getting six assists. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Daka didn't do bad as well. 21 goals with 36 games played and three assists. It's quite good how well that these played. So, obviously, with... Castilla and Justin as well, you're looking to get these balls up. They've got good pace to get involved as well. And as I said with the Hurley crosses, you can see here 14 crossing. And then you have Justin as well with his 13 dribbling and 11 crossing. Not the best, but still they do phenomenal jobs. Especially with the stamina, the pace, the acceleration as well. Good work rates. They get up and down the field perfectly well. I was looking at potentially playing the two center offs as ball playing defenders, but on football manager right now the ball playing defenders are a little bit different they actually run out with the ball and dribble with the ball i don't want that and i didn't think leicester did that they kind of just cleared the ball away you gotta remember it was harry Maguire that was in that lineup there so not really a ball playing defender we know his dribbling ability and his passing ability not quite the best so i would just stick with the two center defensive midfield it two just centre-offs there to mop that one up. We played on a balanced mentality as well. We could have gone to cautious, just step back a little bit more as well, but I thought balance was absolutely perfect. We're not defending too much and we're not attacking a lot neither. Just normal mentality of get the ball down, try and play up there nice and easily and get the ball through. Madison playing in the averted winger, playing that kind of Morez role as Morez used to cut inside, hit it with his left. And James Madison is more than capable of playing that inverted winger there. You know he is as well. He is right footed, could potentially be an issue there. The only issue I probably got with him, but he did get three goals and six assists the whole season. He was more of like a player that you don't judge on stats. That if, if you get what I mean by that, he was there, he was influential. The pass before the assist, if we're doing the American style, he was kind of that type of guy. He got involved with the game, he opened things up, but he led two goals, but he didn't get the assist for the goals. Hope that makes sense. We have Harvey Barnes on the left-hand side, which was pretty much Mark O'Brien over there. Uh, pretty... 15 acceleration, 15 pace, can dribble with the ball as well as crossing. This is why we put dribble mode on with the players. All these players are very, very good at dribbling with the ball. So that's why we introduced dribbling with the ball on here. Weight rate's not the best, but he's still all right at 12. But he does have Justin just behind him who can get the ball forward as well and get in and do a little bit of work for him. So that is the tactic. That is what we did. So all we did is absorb pressure and just try to get the ball straight up to try and find Dackett and Vardy, who was in there as well. But like I say, the low block, just absorb the pressure, push the ball up, try and get it and fire it through. Well, how did we get on? There's only one way to find out, and it's right there. We finished fifth. Now, given... I know we're not going to win the league. We've got the Arsenal's, we've got the Manchester United's, we've got the Man City's, we've got the Liverpool's. Absolutely have. They are the best teams around so far. Chelsea, don't know what's happened to them. Spurs had a bit of a bad one as well. Newcastle, they would normally do well if they had a bad one as well, but the fact that we got here, assists from Harvey Barnes with 12, second best in the league, and then Jamie Vardy coming third for the goal, but Haaland's just ripped the league apart with 42 goals, which would normally happen, but for me, it's unbelievable just that we got fifth with this tactic, and I think if Leicester implemented this right now with the team that they are and how they are, they might actually do a lot better than they are in real life. We come third in the most goals scored, considering that we are playing a low block, managing 78, that's the same as Manchester City, just remember that, and we scored one more than the top, the, the team that won the Premiership, we scored one more goal than them. Liverpool, Manchester United smashed it, but yeah, the fact that we got 78 goals, tied third with Manchester City, playing a low block, just shows how deadly them balls over the top are getting into it. Our possession could be quite comical here. I'd love to see our possession. I'll have to average possessions. We are on 44%. You can see with the low block, we're just inviting that pressure on, so that's nice to see. Quite funny, actually, that we are 14th with possession, and we still managed to finish fifth in the league. Most dribbles, obviously, we're going to be up there with 806 dribbles. Dribbles. Of course we do. We got high influential dribbling players, so it was nice to see that we get up there for that one as well. Most clean sheets, we didn't do very well on clean sheets. We conceded quite a lot of goals. I'm not going to lie. We were joint 16th with only six clean sheets. That was very poor from us. We did leak some goals. And one thing I will say is we leak goals, but we did get the most tackles with 918, which I love to see. And it's one of the stats that I like having in my kind of 
cupboard of victories, if you understand what I mean by that. I just want to have high tackling, and that is what I like to see. Most tackles won is a great thing to have in your team. We, we came eighth with the moat shot. So considering that we are joint third in goal scores, and we had 477 shots, 300 less than Liverpool, We've done quite well, so it just proves that our strikers have been very clinical for us. Another one that I like to see with the low block is the possession that we won. We come sick with 4,767. I actually like that. I think it's brilliant to see just winning the ball back and just putting a bit of pressure on other sides. I really like to see that being high. That in tackles one just shows a real gutsy and grit team there so i really like that one and that's a good stat to have i would have been i like to be a little bit higher but six will do six will do me one thing that i do like as well is that we never lost more than two games in a run i, th I think that's what it means games lost in a row is zero yeah so we actually never lost two games in a row which is absolutely quite remarkable considering that we were playing that low block and just showing you how well we can do with that and as we say that we've lost two let's go have a look at the schedules and just show you a couple of results in here that we have had because we started off really good a 4-1 against manchester city it was absolutely ridiculous at home as well we just let them press and we just hit them on the counter-attack as well it was brilliant to see and then we, we went on to lose against Arsenal and then we went on a real good run Brighton Forest Southampton Chelsea had a real bad year a real bad year so we're, we're writing them off because we then beat Brad, uh, Brentford 4-0 then we got absolutely spanked by Liverpool 5-0 a crazy result against Tottenham it was like a yo-yo this was then we lost to Crystal Palace as you can see we do better at home than we do away West Ham we got a 1-0 win away then Fulham beat us unfortunately Bournemouth 2-0 we beat him Everton we got a uh, carbon arrow third round cup then Manchester United beat us. We head into the World Cup. And then we actually come back from the World Cup pretty well. We beat Manchester United from the Carabao fourth round, which was quite nice to see. Then we beat Aston Villa, beat Leeds. We beat Wolves back into FA Cup time. And we beat Middlesbrough 1-0. Brentford, we beat 2-0 in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. Chelsea 1-1. Spears give us a beating, a 3-0 win. Southampton, we beat. Then we played Chelsea in the Carabao semi Final, we beat them 3-1. This is a weird... We played Chelsea three times, just so you know. Back to back to back to backs. So we beat them in the Carabao Cup final, semi-final, first leg. Then we beat them 4-1 in the FA Cup. And then they just came out and spanked to 7-2. I couldn't quite believe it. I, I, it was a, a shock to the system, I'm not going to tell you. They uh, they absolutely destroyed us, as you can see there from the, from the off. They just... Pile the pressure on. Then we got a crazy result against Liverpool. Jamie Vardy rescuing us a point in the 93rd minute as Ramos got the 89th minute for him. But we got a win there. It got, got a draw there, which felt like a win. It definitely did. Beat Brentford. Drew with Wolves. Then Manchester City beat us at their place, which is fair play. They are one of the best sides on here. We beat Newcastle yet again. A 93rd minute Jamie Vardy win it. Lost to the FA Cup fifth round to Tottenham. Leeds beat us. Did Leeds take six points off us? No, they didn't. We beat them at home. That's all right then. We beat Aston Villa 5-1. Nice bounce back ability to get the goals against them. Manchester United then beat us 5-1. We beat Bournemouth. Lost to West Ham. Beat Crystal Palace. Beat Fulham. Finally beat Fulham as well. Arsenal beat us. They did win the league though, so I don't mind that. And then we ended up really nicely with an Everton, Knox Forest and Brighton. Beating them 2-0, 4-2 and 4-2. So some great results in here for us and some absolute howlers as well so it's a very mixed bunch of results here i'm going to show you a couple of goals now to show you how we were scoring our goals as well so as we were saying we get the ball we push it out to our wingers or fullbacks and we look for that fast overlapping run from behind the back of the defenders there as you can see daka gets in behind the back of him going to play the ball in jamie vardy using his space and pretty much that is how we scored most of our goals they are brilliant goals using the pace of the strikers as two advanced forwards pushing up there and just getting the ball over the top from the wide and hitting that early cross as you would say has been absolutely perfect and that's how we've been scoring our goals mainly now this is where we can see the goal here as cash comes down the wing we are it's a bit sixes and sevens here as you can see ollie watkins pushed in the box no one is there to catch him up and it's an easy tap in really for danny ings but then we kind of absorbed the pressure enough tired aston villa out and vardy coming back a little bit too far there but does a nice little ball finding daka using that space puts a good tackle in as rv barnes gets the early cross in and there is james madison playing in that Mares role in the box 
in the six yard box as well, waiting for that pass, looking like a striker there. And that is exactly how the Morez one would go as well. And Diddy playing the ball over, finding Jamie Vardy, hitting that early cross, trying to get the ball in, being a little bit dangerous. The two man striker all getting up there, getting very, very dangerous attacks through. And there you can see there was no press up there on the high one. Ball gets cleared away. Tillemans picks it up, finds a good ball, and Perez is going to slot that through. Nice and easy there. Lovely stuff. As he, I think he replaced Dakar, I think he did there, as the striker. And then the final goal of the Aston Villa game is just a well worked throw in that we just move the ball really well. And somehow Johnny Evans smashes the ball in there. It's very, very lucky to have him up at front. But that was how we had the throw in where we had our defenders up there. So they were getting involved in the game as well. So we played Liverpool as well. And as you can see, we play the ball up to the top strikers here. They're going to use the pace, dart through pass. And that is where we have them running. And using the run at defenders, the more dribbling, that's what we wanted it for with Daka. He know he's capable of that. He's got the speed for it. So he just darts past Michael Brighton whipping the ball in there. Yeah, okay, a bit of misplay there from the defender. But we get it to wait. We put pressure on them as the ball comes in with the early cross, trying to get through to the strikers. And that's what we were aiming for. The direct play from us is really good. But this is where Liverpool just turn it on and Darwin Nunes turning into Darwin Nunes from Benfica just smashing them in. We did, like I say, we took a two-goal lead against Liverpool. So the fact that they actually come back to went 3-2 was... Not the best. There's a poor ball in the center there. If we had gone over the top, potentially we could have reliefed that or played more direct, but we didn't. We played it a little bit shorter and it just caught us out. As you can see there, Liverpool have got the five players. So the press of Liverpool was a little bit too much for us. That's how we conceded. Look how many players they've got in the box. There's six players in that box right now. Six players with a red shirt. That is just a little bit too much for us to handle. But we do get Jamie Vardy a goal in the 93rd from a hoof up front as we find Perez there playing out on the wing with a great ball into Jamie Vardy to finish it off. The direct football of a low block of a 4-4-2. I feel like Brexit football, but it was absolutely brilliant. The strikers did his wonders. And guys, that is my eyes. It's how Ranieri played his football. And that is what hell of a season for Leicester City and I think if they could they would take that right now because that is the best of the bunch and they are in the Europa League and they would take that right now guys if you enjoyed this video please leave a like hit the subscribe it would help me out massively I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year it would be a wonderful Christmas gift for me so please consider smashing the subscribe button if you want to see more live action from me as well I'm live at twitch www.twitch.tv forward slash tick 147 where I'm live most days doing a save or tactic build you never know what i'm going to do but please get over there hit the follow button on that and check me out over on there but guys thank you very much for taking a little part of your day and spending it checking out my content it means the world to me i'll catch you all next time much love and bye bye